<laughs> it's a good beginning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Should I put okay. the question? Yeah, we just yeah. what's the question? The question is uh, <clears throat> how you got this idea to establish uh, Islamic belief. No Islamic belief is worldwide and everybody is profiting. Uh, you are, Alhamdulillah, God has given you this idea. How you got this idea? Uh, Sometimes you start something, you think about it. And sometimes you start something because there's a need for it. When we started Islamic Leaf in 1984, uh, there was a need for Islamic Leaf to start. Because there was a big famine, and we were uh, students in the university, so we wanted to do something. This was the need. We did not realize that we would be here today, especially being with you, in the heart of Europe, the capital of Europe, yes. Berlin, okay, to meet the Islamic League workers. In 84, we were just concentrating on the need of the people in Africa. That's it. Mm. Allah took it as a seed. Mm. And He Himself made it very fruitful tree. So, in my age, or at my age, I can see you are the fruits. Of course. Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Germany, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Palestine, Gaza, Iraq, Yemen, call it. So you are the fruits of this seed in Europe. Okay? When you want to do something, generally, you need to do three or four things. First of all, do not do it for yourself. Do it for the community. Okay. Second, you have to believe in what you are doing. Third, you have to believe in the community needs. Okay? Fourth, you have to have a message to give to the people. You have to have a message to give to the people. And keep telling them the message. Fifth, you have to have a product. <laughs> what is your product that you would like to give to the community? You teach, you defend, you make publicity, you do anything. And this is the product. As a teacher, as an engineer, as a doctor for the community. And most important thing, you have to link all this to your own belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number seven is you do not mix cards because you are working in the humanitarian field. Don't play politics. Don't play uh, different uh, speciality which is not humanitarian. If people give you money, for charity, to go to India, don't spend it in Germany. <coughs> if they give you money for charity for Syria, don't build mosques. Okay, so it has to be spent on, this purpose. on the right <coughs> things and the intention. Last but not least, you yourself or me myself should not become arrogant of what we have because soon the money comes. The ego comes. Oh! When there's no money, nobody will talk to you. But when you have money, like she said uh, last year, there's about 3,500 Kurbani only from uh, Berlin. She needs a quarter of a million uh, euro just from Berlin on cash donation. When we started here in the 90s, Hardly bought any of the used to come and give us money. 
Okay, but now you have a lot of money. You have about 16, 17 million, 15, 16 million euro. You have charity shops. You have nine people working in Berlin office. Maybe 20, 30 people working in Cologne office. You want somebody here, there. All, all the company. 20 years, 25 years ago, Germany was one man show. Okay. And this is the seed. If Allah looks at your heart, at your heart, sister, that your heart, and you find that your heart is the right heart, He will make your seed to become a forest, to become a habitat. So it's very difficult and very easy. When you focus on the child, the woman, and the elderly. There was no plan. Answer, to answer this question, there was no plan. Just start like this. Just start like At that time you were a student, no? Yes, I was a student. Mm -hmm. And you're still a student. <laughs> of course, you all are students. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can you... Oh, why <laughs> I'll find you a good one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, my question would be, uh, how can we win non-Muslim donors? Because, for example, in Germany currently, there is a huge <coughs> wave, you can see it online, for example. Even if you don't meet a lot of people outside, huge wave people helpful to everyone wants to help somehow uh, the refugees, and uh, we know about ninety percent of them are Muslims, our brothers and sisters. We want to help them, and there are a lot of people want to help them because they are seeing it. There are also other uh, there are people suffering in Syria. And so other how countries. can you convince non Muslims? How we see that they, their intention is there, they want to help. How can we get them to come to us? Okay. First of all, who are you? Why should I come to your house and they don't trust you? Right. What's your message on the Facebook? What's your message on the appeal paper, the, the campaign, you know? Yeah. What's your message? Do they understand the, the German language you put on your paper? Or you speak a German language which those people do not speak. Okay. Is your message humanitarian for everybody? Or it's only for Muslims? Whom you know from the non-Muslim community? Do you have a partnership with a church? Do you have a partnership with a synagogue? Do you have a partnership with uh, another non-Muslim organization in the country? So they can recommend you. Because you can't come to my house as a Christian, German, and asked me for money, I said, whom you know in the Christian area, okay? And if I know that you know the, 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 the church leader or this, and we are making a project together as Muslims and Christians and Jews, and so the other people will come and trust you. Because actually the media is talking badly about Islam. You have to, uh, what do you call it? To struggle hard to convince the ordinary donor who is a little bit scared of you because of what the media write about you wrongly. So you have to have this partnership. And you have to look at each one of you. What do you write on your Facebook? When what do you write on your Facebook? I don't, I'm just, no, no, I don't want to answer. <coughs> If you, if you bought something stupid, I will never go to your organization. This, uh, this Islamic relief, now we are uh, on the work of Islamic relief and we are working in community. Your uh, best suggestion for us how to behave the community, how to behave, to do the work in the community. Uh, how you behave? Sense, yeah, you we are our thing. And uh, some your suggestion. Uh, is very needed for us. Okay. Yeah. How you behave is the manner. Yeah. Is the basic, yeah. The basics of it is what Hazrat Aisha said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was his manner was Quran. Quran. Yeah. Or he was a walking Quran on earth. Yeah. You are talking about the poor people of Bangladesh or Syria, the refugees, you should represent them. If you represent the poor, 
your language, your code of dress, your arrogance, your message, your project, and the poor child. Your language to be heartfelt, coming from your heart, not from your mouth, because you live the issue, which moves you. All right, your code of dress. They cannot see you wearing a very top designer dress, very elegant, and you're talking about people who are poor. Okay? That's another thing. Your speech should not be uh, offensive to them, but heart raising. And to let their hearts feel the pain and the agony of the others. Your message should be very clear, short, and with a great reward in life and in the life to come. So you link them to the bigger issue of Allah. Your product should be very clear. You want to raise money for food, you want to raise money for clothes, you want to raise money for water, you want to raise money for korban, for whatever. You have to be very, very clear to them. And your message should not be a speech. I'm not giving a khut. This, uh, this Islamic relief, now we are uh, on the work of Islamic relief and we are working in community. Your uh, best suggestion for us how to behave the community, how to behave, to do the work in the community. Uh, how you behave? Service. Yeah, you we are our suggestion. And uh, some your suggestion uh, is very needed for us. Okay. Yeah. How you behave is the manner. Yeah. And the basic, the basics of it is what Hazrat Aisha said about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was his manner was Quran, Quran. Yeah. or he was a walking Quran on earth. Yeah. You are talking about the poor people of Bangladesh or Syria, the refugees. You should represent them if you represent the poor your language your code of dress your arrogance your message your project and the poor child your language to be heartfelt coming from your heart not from your mouth because you live the issue, which moves you, all right? Your code of dress, they cannot see you wearing a very top designer dress, very elegant, and you're talking about people who are poor, okay? That's another thing. Your speech, should not be uh, offensive to them, but heart raising, and to let their hearts feel the pain and the agony of the others. Your message should be very clear, short, and with a great reward in life and in the life to come. So you link them to the bigger issue of Allah. Your product should be very clear. You want to raise money for food, you want to raise money for clothes, you want to raise money for water, you want to raise money for korban, for whatever. You have to be very, very clear to them. And your message should not be a speech. You are not giving a